and you would be closed up in your heart towards me, I would dry up. I would wither because this love is the basis of oneness. Where this love is not, there is no oneness, brothers. You can concoct it and philosophize on it and theorize it and explain it a thousand different ways, but the basic essential is missing, and that is that love. Only out of love comes true oneness. And if the one and the other may say, eh, it's hard to deal with my rector or the rector with his district rector, something is amiss, go and get him, as our district apostle would say, by the collar. Go to his knock door and say, I want to talk to you. We have to talk things out like a man. Things are not right between us. Isn't that what the Lord Jesus did with Peter? He talked it out with him, cleaned up his act. And oftentimes, brothers, that is not done. It's not done. Maybe his highness, the higher one, will get a little shaky and shiver in his boots. That's good for you. Good for you. Help circulation. <laughs> Removes the cholesterol plaque and shifts it around a little bit. It's good for you. Nothing wrong with it. A little excitement is good for the heart. Pumps faster. Moves the blood faster. Why shouldn't we be that way? In that, in that fact, I said to the chief apostle, that's what would happen to me. But the chief apostle have to bring you something else. I said, I grew up under the district apostle. Impulsive, <coughs> big mouth, sometimes maybe say a word too much, express it a little more too open. I said, maybe in the course of the year, I may have said something to you that just wasn't, that didn't sit right with you. And perhaps this ticker has gone off your cliff, just so you know. Just so you you're listening to the service instead of watching your tape. <laughs> we do this because we've had problems sometimes with transmission and PA systems. So this is a backup system. Learn from the airlines. <laughs> so to him, Chief Apostle, maybe I said something and maybe you thought to yourself, that really wasn't... It's going a little too far. I said, Shiva Apostle, in North America we have a saying, if you're man enough to say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing, then be man enough to come and admit it and apologize and ask for forgiveness. I did that over the years with our district apostle. And the chief apostle called me. He said, there is nothing to forgive. He said, let me say something. The openness with which you talk and what you put on that fax did me a lot of good. So brothers, go to your rectors and go to your district rectors and say, hey, if things are not in order with us, then we're going to go to the, going to go to the apostle or the bishop. We're going to get things in order. One of us is wrong. And whichever one is wrong then, whether the one is 51% wrong and the other one 49% wrong, let them both say, hey, we have both done wrong. And my dear brothers, that often is not done enough. Often not done enough. You know why? Because the one and the other is afraid to get into a situation where there's stink involved. But where there's stink involved, there's rot. And remember, the Lord Jesus said, if you believe me, you will do greater works than I. You'll bring the matter in order. That is, brothers, what belongs to the security and to the consolidation of this church. That's the love of a Savior. Just imagine. The Lord Jesus writes in Revelation to the church in Sardis, he said, I know your works. But he said, I haven't found them perfect. When you go back into the Old Covenant, that's what he said to kings in the Old Covenant. There were three categories of kings. It says that he did it which was right in the sight of God with a perfect heart. What does a perfect heart mean? Wholehearted, genuinely. And the other one, he did right in the sight of God. But ah. It ach and krach and spiritual arthritis and rheumatism. Finally he did it, but not with a perfect heart. And the other one, he says, he did that which was evil. And when you read the history, he classified this middle one to the other one. Pushed him over on that side. Pushed him over on that side. You know what else the love of a Savior does? You can read it here. John 15, 13. He said, he who lays down his life for his friend 
When you read it in the old Luther Bible, it says, He who leaves his life for his friend. He who gives up his own interest and his own inclination and his own pastime and his own pleasure and his own free time for the sake of his friend. That is a Savior. Read it. John 15, verse 13. When you sometimes get a letter and say, I called up my priest or my rector, but he said, this is my free night with my family. I have no time for you. I know what I would do. I know what I would do. Grab him by the collar and say, that's the last time you do that. You're not a savior. And it's done. It's done. And oftentimes the district rectors and even the bishops, yeah, 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 yeah. They cover that all up because they're all afraid to go into a situation that stinks until one of us has to get into it. Eh? And one of us has to get into it. And we have to, as the old English saying goes, then we have to pull a Lazarus act because it was not done along the way. All of those things, my dear brothers and sisters, belong to love remaining high. They remain, they belong to love enduring. Don't serve the congregation junk food. If you hear and you receive something from your blessing bearer, take it as it is. Pass it on as it is. That's what the Lord Jesus did. But it's not always done. Somewhere, you know we say in English, somewhere it's lost in the translation. And here we say somewhere it's lost in the transition. Something is lost. So it gets there. Why is something lost? The one doesn't like what's in it, so he takes it out. The other one thinks it should be this way, so he puts it in. And then what do we end up at the end of the pipeline? <coughs> Junk food. Junk food. And then you wonder why when this one and that one faces spiritual situations that they're, they haven't got the faith or where they, they should bring up their love the love is not there. Brothers, it starts with us. It starts with us. We don't have to account for what they do with it. We have to account for how we receive it and how we distribute it. We don't have to account for what they do with it. And that is the essential part on our part. Here and there, we have lack of brothers. And, you know, the last year... I visit a lot of districts, sub-districts. And the chief apostle at the retirement of the chief, uh, district apostle Kraus and my ordination said to me, you know almost every corner of this vast district. And I sent him a fax back and said, chief apostle, you were right, but now it's 13 months later. Now I know what's in the corners. <laughs> now I know what's in the corners. And you know what you find in the corners? Here and there we meet brothers desperately. But not brothers that you just ordain. Brothers that are brought up. And I have come to the conclusion our administration brothers are up today fall into three categories. Just like the three kings fall into three categories. You have the real zealots down to the core new apostolic. Genuine prayers, offerers, Defenders of the faith. They love to give testimony. They're not afraid of a smell somewhere. If it stinks, they go to the family, try to set it aright. And when they talk to their brothers, they put everything into them that they have. And they bring them up that way. We have, we have certain areas in North America. In this case, those of you who are in the United Kingdom, I can't talk that much about it. I haven't been there that much. I hope to get there in March. But we have areas, brothers, where we have more brothers than we know what to do with. 